Okay, so I'm waiting on a part that's arriving today to complete the AL80A. So I'm going to do some work on the 6000 amp. So the coil is about 3.5 microhenries. I'm going to add some straps between each end of the coil, the capacitors. But first I'm going to mount the mica caps. Bought the hardware. I have to plug up that hole down there. I want to get this cap as close to the capacitor over here as possible. So I can't put a screw through it. It will interfere with the bottom of this capacitor. So I'm going to use one of those hole plug thingies. I'll make it bigger, larger, and then plug it. So, and then I'll cut some straps. And, uh, well, anyway, I'll show it as I go along. So, see you guys soon. Hey, everybody. So, I'm back. So, I spent a bunch of time today getting the coil to resonate on 160. It's fine-tuned for, uh, to cover uh, between 1.875 and 1.975 flat. It just goes up a hair when you go down below or above. So I'm going to show you everything I did. I'll take the cover off. So I paralleled the two sections of this cap. Same with this cap. One strap goes over to the coil. Plenty of clearance between the Strap and ground, it's three eighths of an inch wide. Same with this strap, Go over to that side of the coil, and those are both soldered. They're studs and solder to the ring terminal, ring terminal solder to the coil. So I added the mica capacitors. So I have three capacitors on each side that are switched in when you get to 80 meters, roughly 1100 or so, and then the mica cap, which is like 1900 something, gets switched in also in parallel with the other three on each side. So, same here with that. And then, you know, so the three and the mica cap, the three and the mica cap. So, mica cap connects over to a contact on the rotary switch. And then the common, you know, uh, for that switch connects to this capacitor. And then the other contact connects to those three caps. And... Then this uh, front rotary switch does the same. There's a contact. Once you hit 80, it switches in those three, and then 160 adds this in two. So um, I fine-tuned the coil. I didn't have to add or remove any wraps. I just compressed and expanded until I got it right. I added a little bit more capacitance because uh, this mica is a little bit less capacitance than this one and the three um, doorknobs, uh, the tolerance on one of them was different. Uh, the 500 puff was different than the other two. So anyway, um, plus you have that capacitance. So anyway, um, I added two more down here switched in parallel with this one. So I mean, it's, yeah, it's basically just in parallel. So they switch in on 160 in parallel with the other ones because uh, you know, I, I set the center frequency at like 1.925, um, you know, in that area. I wanted, uh, I wanted to be able to cover 1.875 to 1.975 with a flat SWR, 50 ohms. Um, and I wanted the capacitors to be close to the middle of the range. So I added the capacitance because this one was almost fully meshed when I got down to the bottom when I got down to 1.875, so now it's it's more uh, it's not uh, at full capacity. It's you know anyway, you get the idea. I wanted some some uh, some adjustment beyond you know wherever I was, you know, on the bottom of, of that area. I wanted some extra adjustment. I didn't want to be at max, and then I didn't want to be at minimum on the uh, the higher end. Okay, so. That's how you always want to do it. You know, just when I put the tube in, depending on how I'm driving the tube, the cath, you know, the uh, cathode impedance could be slightly different. You know, I have a 51 ohm resistor here, tubes installed, non-inductive resistor. But just in case that, that changes a little bit, I wanted some wiggle room, okay? So I'm going to put the cover on because the metal over it doesn't really change it much. just changes the impedance a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and key the relay. 
RJ1A. I have the analyzer connected with 50 ohm coax to the back connector, the SO239. Okay, so one to one. I can tweak it just a hair. Let's see there. 50 ohms, one to one. She is good. So, sorry, I'm tired. I get up early and I've been messing with this uh, all day. So, now I can tap the coil to 80, 40, 20, and 15. I'm not going to mess with 10 meters. It's just not worth it. I'd rather work on 160. Um, I don't have enough contacts on the output rotary switch to cover all the bands. So, I'll take 160. Uh, it's harder to get something like this to work on 160. You need twice, like twice the inductance of 80. It's just, it's more difficult, you know, so I wanted to do it. Uh, so I'll be back on the L80A tomorrow. The plate choke cam, I'll install that real quick. I'll do a video of that and uh, just waiting on tubes. And, you know, um, that's about it. So thanks for watching. The website is amprepairguy.com and the phone number is 203-892-4119. More videos to come, but basically just... You know, I already know where to tap it, so just have to cut some more straps and which is a piece of cake and then tap the coil. Then the input circuit's done. Then I'll move on to the next portion. So I'm getting there, but this will be a fun this is a fun project. And uh no it's not for sale, but if someone somewhere wants one and they want to pay what it costs and parts and labor, then you can get one too, but it'll be in a nice new cabinet. Two separate cabinets, so, and all new parts. So, well, anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great night. 73.